assalamu alaikum so in this video we are going to discuss some nast entry test past paper questions which are related to the topic solutions of trigonometric equations now we have been solving so many equations with different variables but this time around things are a bit different we will be solving trigonometric equations right so when we say trigonometric equations it basically means that our equations will have different trigonometric functions like cos tan sin cosine tan inverse and you know stuff like that okay so let's get started the very first question has cos okay so <clears throat> here's the first question Okay, which of the following is a solution of cos 3x equals 1 by 2? Okay, now imagine that you have been asked this question in exam and you are interested in finding out the solution. So how do we go about such questions? Okay, so whenever we have to find the solution, we need to find the value of x. So we get rid of everything that is next to x. So we have cos, we have 3. So we do 3x equals cos inverse 1 by 2 and now I need to get rid of this 3 so I will say x equals 1 by 3 cos inverse 1 by 2 and where is this answer? This answer is d 1 by 3 arc cos 1 by 2 arc cos is basically cos inverse right so even if it's a trigonometric equation or any other equation, this is how we solve any equation in maths by making x e subject. So in order to make x e subject, we had to go about this question this way. Okay. Then we have the second question. So it is sine inverse x plus cos inverse x is what? Now this is a property through which we know that sine inverse x plus cos inverse x equals pi by 2 right so this is a property that is why the answer is c now obviously for any t for nast entry test you would not be allowed to use calculators you would not be having any data booklets unlike uh, you know the sad exams and unlike the cambridge exams so this time around you will have to memorize quite a lot of things so basically those include properties some values of trigonometric functions at different angles and stuff like that okay anyways this would be pi by 2 because we know it from this property okay then we have the third question okay so it is range of tan inverse x okay so if we talk about tan inverse x we know that its range range is the values on the y-axis they are between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2 right so this would be the answer minus pi by 2 and pi by 2 are not included that is why i did not think b since uh, we have all the values between that uh, this interval so c would be the answer Okay, then the fourth question is what is the range of cosecant inverse x? Okay, now uh, basically if I talk about the range of cosecant inverse x, I know that it is, it has minus pi by 2 and all the values after minus pi by 2 till pi by 2 but we don't have the value y equals 0 right this is not included now if we try looking for such um, an option in our answers is it b no it's not b why because firstly the brackets are not straight which means that minus pi by 2 and pi by 2 are not included number two this range is telling us that every value is included but the problem is that y equals 0 should not be there right we know that y equals 0 is not the part of uh, range so this means that the answer would be 
none because we are not able to find our answer okay so this was the fourth question let's talk about the fifth one okay so we have cosecant inverse minus 2 under root uh, minus 2 by under root 2 okay now first thing is first let's just try understanding this question so i can write it as minus 2 under root 2 equals cosecant theta okay and now i can since cosecant and secant are trigonometric functions which we don't use that much okay so i am more aware of uh, what sin theta's value would be or what cos theta's value would be so i will write it in terms of sin theta so that would be 1 by sin theta okay then i will just take sin theta there and i will get sin theta equals under root 2 by 2 with a minus sign and i can always write under root 2 by 2 as 1 by under root 2 so this basically is sin theta equals minus 1 by under root 2 and i know the value of theta would basically be sin inverse minus 1 by under root 2 and what is this value so this value is minus pi by 4 right because we know that the value um of a function at minus pi by 4 is basically minus 1 by under root 2 okay so this was the fifth question now let's talk about the sixth one okay which of the following can be the solution of sin 2x equals cos x now solution of this okay this means that we need to plot both these graphs okay so let's just try plotting these graphs okay so this is y this is x this is 1 this is minus 1 okay so it would be this graph for which for which function for cos x okay this is for cos x this value is pi last value is 2 pi this would be 3 pi by 2 this would be pi by 2 and this would be pi by 4 okay now this graph is for cos x we are interested in sin 2x equals cos x for that i need to plot the graph of sin 2x now this time around it's not simple sin x it's sin of 2x so this means that its period would be pi and so in the 0 to 2 pi range i would be able to make two sine graphs so this means that it would be this this all right now this is the graph of sin 2x now we are interested in solution solution means the intersections so this is one intersection pi by 4 this is the other intersection pi by 2 then this is somewhere here then we have 3 pi by 2 okay so we can see that we have one intersection at pi by 2 at pi by 4 so do we have pi by 4 and pi by 2 no we don't have pi by 4 and pi by 2 then we have at 3 pi by 2 as well so what are the points 
pi by 4, pi by 2, 3 pi by 2. And yes, we do have this as well, but it's between 3 by 4 pi and pi. So I don't know this value exactly. But I do have this as my answer, so I'll choose that immediately. So this would be the answer. Okay. So we are done with the sixth question as well. For such questions, plotting is the best solution. Just plot quickly, uh, sketch quickly, and you would be able to get your answer immediately. Okay, so let's talk about the seventh question then. Solve for x, cos x equals minus under root 3 by 2. Okay, now for this question, what you need to understand is, again, as I told you, you would have to memorize a lot of things, but I'm not the type of teacher who encourages, you know, such things in math. So let's think about it. Okay, so basically, uh, if we think of under root 3 by 2, it would be very close to 1, right? It would be a number very close to 1. So, but it's not 1. Obviously, it's less than 1, but it is very close to 1. So, let's plot the graph of cos x because we will, will be needing that. Let's say this is the cos graph. This is 2 pi. This is pi. Uh, this was pi by 2. This is 3 pi by 2. Okay. We need to see that when is the value of function approximately minus 1. This is 0. This is y. This is x. This is minus 1. So it would be somewhere here. Somewhere here, let's say. Okay, now, what is the value of x here is the value of x pi by 2 no value of x is not pi by 2 because pi by 2 is here is it pi by 3 no pi by 3 would be somewhere here before pi by 2 so this cannot be the choice is it 5 pi by 6 yes it could be because it is between pi by 2 and pi and is it pi by 4 no it is not pi by 4 because pi by 4 would be somewhere here and if it's not pi by 2, it certainly cannot be pi by 4. So the answer would be C. So for such questions, I would not advise you to memorize. Yes, for like obviously you should have a look at all these values before going for the exam. But you can always use such um, things for getting the answers, right? Okay. So let's talk about the eighth question then. Sine inverse minus x. Now, this is basically a property. Well, we know that sine of minus x is basically minus sine x, right? So, this is a property. And we know that cos of minus x is cos x because the graph of cos is symmetric. So the values for negative angles are equal to the values for positive angles, right? Okay. And uh, if we talk about sine inverse, so we know that sine inverse minus x is basically minus sine inverse x, right? So this value would be c. The answer would be c because this again is a property okay so let's talk about the next question okay so we have the ninth question now okay it is cot inverse x now what is cot although cot is 1 by tan but this does not imply that the answer would be A because we're talking about inverse, okay? So, cot inverse x, let's just write this down for our understanding. Cot inverse x equals what? Let's say this is theta. This means that 
x equals cot theta. This means that x equals 1 by tan theta. This means that I can take tan theta there and I will get 1 by x and the value of theta is tan inverse 1 by x, right? So the answer would be B. Oh, yes, it is a property. You don't have to, obviously, you don't have that, but that much time that you start um, thinking about questions this way. But yes, you can try managing this if you spend less time on the easy questions, right? So as I've been telling you guys, time allocation is very, very important. In this question, one way of doing this was that directly you choose option B because you know it's true. Uh, because you know that it is a property, right? But if you think about it logically, just know that cot inverse x would be equal to some angle, right? And uh, what if you take cot inverse to the other side, that would become cot. And then cot theta can be written as 1 by tan theta. And then if you find the value of theta, you will get tan inverse 1 by x. So B would be the answer. Okay. Then let's talk about the 10th question. Okay. So for the 10th question, we have cosecant inverse x. Again, this is just like the previous question. One way of doing it, this is just um, using properties and to that way. And another way of doing it is logically, I can write it as cosecant inverse x is basically theta. I can take cosecant inverse to the other side and that will give me simple cosecant theta. I can write cosecant theta as 1 by sine theta. And I can take this to the other side and x in the denominator. So I will get sine theta equals 1 by x. And finally, theta is sine inverse 1 by x. So this means that D would be the answer. So obviously, um, you can do it whatever way you are comfortable with, but you should always think about things logically as well because only then you would be able to, uh, you know, solve questions correctly even if you have forgotten the properties and stuff like that. Okay, so in this part, in the first part of this video, we have done these 10 questions which were about um, solving trigonometric equations and some questions related to inverse functions as well. In fact, inverse trigonometric functions as well. In the next part of this video, we will solve more questions from the same topic.